Assalamu alaikum. This video is primarily created for educated non-Muslims who have a bare minimum to moderate level of knowledge about their own religion and a little bit of history. But it might also help the Muslims to better understand the comparative positions of their own religion as well. In this video, I would like to present how the religion of Islam evolved throughout the human history. First, we must understand the concept of prophethood. Many religions of the world, including Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, have the belief that God sends human prophet to humanity to deliver his message. Many of them also receive revelations for their followers. These prophets also act as the role model as a human being to demonstrate how to live up to the message sent by God to humanity. Atheism is a relatively new concept where, with the evolution of science and technology, people lost focus over the basic knowledge of their own religion and the concept of God. The smarter people of the older generations couldn't imagine a complex world like this to even exist without a creator. You can follow the steps shown in the screen right now for more details. If we consider the major religions that exist today, most of them support monotheism, that is the concept of one God. Today, a vast majority of humanity follows Christianity. If any non-Christian thinks that they believe in three different God, that is God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, which is totally against their concept of the Trinity. Educated Christians even get offended if anyone tries to accuse them of believing in more than one God. Interestingly, the concept of God in Judaism is the same as the God in Islam, sharing similar kind of attributes. The belief of polytheism will slowly come up in my discussion. Many people think that Hinduism is the most ancient religion and Islam is the latest of all. They actually think that Islam started from the coming of Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, but in fact, the oldest of all religions is Islam, and we will see how this is the case. First, we need to be very clear that most of the major religions of the world, including Islam, don't believe in Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, which is based on the idea that human beings came into existence by the evolution from the other creatures or species like apes or monkeys. If you see this chart, almost all of the major religions including Islam, Christianity, and Judaism have the common belief that Adam, peace be upon him, is the first human being who was directly created by God and sent to this earth. Later on, one of his sons named Seth, may peace be upon him, carried on the prophetic legacy, even though his name is not directly mentioned in the Quran. After a few generations came Enoch or Idris, may peace be upon him, and after a few more generations came Noah or Nuh, may peace be upon him, who faced idolatry. The concept of polytheism started from his time, and no other prophet before him had to fight this issue. He preached and teached Islam and Tawhid, that is the concept of monotheism against idolatry for 950 years but he could only convince a maximum of 80 people. He and his followers with few animals were saved by an ark or boat from the flood sent by God as a punishment for the rejection of Islam. So we can see that the root of these religions like Hinduism etc are relatively new concept as compared to Islam which actually started from the first human being on earth that is Adam may peace be upon him. There are other prophets and messengers who came after Nuh may peace be upon him, but for this particular discussion, let's move to the mightiest prophetic figure who is accepted by almost all the major religions of this world, that is Abraham or Ibrahim may peace be upon him. For our discussion, let's compare Christianity and Judaism with Islam. For a long period of time, Ibrahim peace be upon him was asking God to grant him a righteous child. However, his wife, Sarah, God be pleased with her, was initially a barren. 
who had a slave girl of noble lineage named Hagar or Hajar may God be pleased with her Sarah set free Hajar so that her husband Ibrahim may peace be upon him could marry her in order to have an offspring and continue his noble prophetic lineage thus Ibrahim may peace be upon him had his first son Ismail peace be upon him from Hajar may God be pleased with her and God commanded Ibrahim may peace be upon him to leave Hajar God be pleased with her and his son in a deserted land Ibrahim may peace be upon him was blessed with that child after waiting for a long period of time and he loved his child however Ibrahim may peace be upon him was the best role model of a muslim who used to follow god's command without any hesitation so he left his second wife and the child to a deserted place god saved that child and the mother by providing them with zamzam water and slowly a community developed in that place later on ibrahim may peace be upon him used to visit that child and build the kaaba over there with his child which is the strongest opinion among the scholars no prophets are reported to be found from the progeny of ismail may peace be upon him since a long period of time on the other hand god sent angels to give good news to sara may god be pleased with her that she was going to bear a child even though she had become a old woman thus Isaac or Ishaq peace be upon him was born from the first wife of Ibrahim may peace be upon him all of the prophets that came after Ibrahim may peace be upon him onwards are reported to have come from the progeny of his son Ishaq may peace be upon him examples include Jacob or Yaqub may peace be upon him Joseph or Yusuf may peace be upon him Jonah or Yunus may peace be upon him Moses or Musa may peace be upon him Solomon or Suleiman may peace be upon him Jesus or Isa may peace be upon him and so on so you can easily see that the number of prophets coming from the progeny of Ishaq may peace be upon him are so many that it is almost impossible to deny any prophet to come from this noble lineage however interestingly since a very long period of time we cannot find any prophet from the progeny of Ismail may peace be upon him another interesting fact is that the stories of all these prophets that are mentioned in the scriptures or revelation are almost the same in all the religious scriptures or revelation including the Quran however the Quran or the hadith of Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him never mentions anything against any of these prophets that is demeaning to their character proving that if there's any evil accusation made by other scriptures these are not actually true many of the information of the scriptures of other religions are changed by humans with the time but the quran is kept intact from the very beginning to this point of time The Quran affirms that among many other true revelations of the prophets Jabur was revealed to David or Daud may peace be upon him Torah was revealed to Musa may peace be upon him the Injil was revealed to Isa may peace be upon him which was the true gospel bestowed upon Jesus or Isa may peace be upon him by God subsequently this Injil formed the core or primary section of the Bible The Quran is the final revelation of Almighty God that has remained unchanged and uncorrupted until now and we as Muslims believe that the God with his divine help will preserve it till the end of times. Now, going back to the story of progeny of Ibrahim may peace be upon him's son Ismail may peace be upon him who was left to a deserted place which later formed Mecca of Arabia. where the history of prophethood seemed to have been suspended for a quite long period of time but the scripture of the jews predicted that a messenger is going to come in a place that best describes the medina so some of the jews went there and stayed over there waiting for the prophecy to be fulfilled the final messenger of god may peace and blessings be upon him was already born from the progeny of ismail may peace be upon him in makkah 
and when he started preaching monotheism in his own land where the polytheistic worship was rampant and deeply rooted people of his own land rejected him and started to torture and execute his followers few people from medina reached out to muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him and offered him and his followers protections in their own land and finally he may peace and blessings be upon him had to migrate to medina with a vast majority of his followers where those jews were surprised to see someone coming and claiming himself as the prophet of god they were actually expecting the prophet to come from the lineage of the other side so it was a great challenge for them to accept muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him as the prophet otherwise they would have easily accepted him and informed the other jews of that time to accept him as well they were fully convinced by all the signs that they were expecting but they felt too arrogant to accept the truth and this is also found in the quran illustrating that they could recognize muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him as the prophet of god in the same way that they could recognize their own children now let's analyze the conceptual differences between the people of jews christians and islam let's see why the jews and christians are not accepting muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him as the prophet of god from their perspective If you have a close look at the chart who was the mother of Ismail may peace be upon him Hajar may God be pleased with her right but she was once a slave of Sarah may God be pleased with her even though she belonged from a noble lineage her slavery before her marriage to Ibrahim may peace be upon him can easily create a negative impact in the minds of the people of other faith traditions We Muslims believe that Isa may peace be upon him didn't have any father and was miraculously born without any male intervention Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him didn't have much miracles like Isa may peace be upon him to prove his prophethood his miracle is actually Quran the true word of God which is protected by God in a manner that no change could be made to this till now Initial slavery of Hajar is the first contributing factor of their not acceptance of Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him. The second most obvious contributing factor is the delay in prophethood in the lineage of Ismail may peace be upon him as compared to the lineage of Ishaq may peace be upon him and these two factors can be argued as logical. These are very obvious questions. Why would be the best of all prophets come from the lineage that can be traced back to a woman who was once a slave why did the noble lineage of prophethood be suspended for such a lengthy period of time however the third contributing factor is actually lack of humility in accepting the fact that the final messenger muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him originated from arabia which was much less civilized and had a lower level of education in comparison to most of the other parts of the world at that time so it's the duty of the muslims to educate the people at mass by requesting them to find out the actual truth by reading the meaning of the quran by themselves and thereby reach out to the ultimate conclusion by comparing this unmodified word of god with the scriptures of their own religion The Quran is the direct message from God to the whole of humanity. So, we need to concentrate on his message, that is the Quran, rather than tracing back the progeny of the messenger who has delivered the message. The message was revealed to Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him, and he has got a strong lineage initiating from Ibrahim may peace be upon him. The waiting period in the lineage is nothing but a test from God. The Quran is itself a miracle whose meaning and eloquence is self-evident to prove itself to be the word of God. I hope this discussion clarified some of these aspects to you. Now, I would encourage you to do further research and explore knowledge from all possible dimensions with an open mind and finally decide by yourself what you are truly convinced 
after your seeking of the truth. Thank you. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.